but I want to begin by giving you an illustration of what this thing is all about. And uh, I brought with me, uh, now don't worry about this, because my church I pastored when Sharon and I got married, they gave me one of these, told me to open it up, it had hundreds of dollars in it. And, uh, and so I opened it into church, and, and hundreds of dollars fly out just like this. Oh no, uh -oh. I didn't put it in there. <coughs> that, hold that over him, will you? And uh, hold it backwards. So, and then, uh, yeah. And then, I don't put it up quite so high. And then take the other hand here, and I want you to, on this back half of that, just dump that right there. Watch it now. <laughs> Watch it now. You getting wet yet, Paul? Not yet. Okay. Dump it all. Dump it all. That's called a covering. You see that? Now then, I got this second glass here. And uh, I want you to take this right here. <laughs> Hold on now. And I want you to just dump it right on his head right now. <laughs> that would have been without a covering. You see that? That was with a covering. The trials and storms of life came and because he was under the righteous one, the trials and storms of life did not hit Paul. Brandon here, on the other hand, has too pretty a hair for me to dump water on him on Sunday morning. But you see, had there been water in that glass, Brandon would have been left up undone, available to attack without, without a, a rescue and a, ref, a, a reference. He would have been just left alone. You see that? All, all too frequently. Thank you. You guys are just wonderful. All too frequently in this life, we don't realize what God has done for us in the righteous one. So I want you to see today, there are only two positions in life man can be in. Man can be under the covering of an almighty God. Or man can be left undone, uncovered, and unprotected. Now I was praying about this last night. And before I read my scripture, I want to tell you what the Holy Spirit showed me. The Holy Spirit showed me that man serves two masters. He can only serve one. Wait a minute. I preached on that, didn't I? Did I preach on that? I think it did. And I began to pray about this thing of doing this little covering and uncovering thing. And something became very apparent to me. Did you know that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were given the option of two trees? One of them was called the tree of life. The other one was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And did you know that they could have eaten of the tree of life? and been nurtured from the inside out from the tree of life, built a creation and a race of people that would have been covered by Almighty God, and lived in a protected garden for as long as that race of people could live. But that race of people did not understand that there are two masters. They didn't understand that there are two masters, and one is good and one is evil. So when you choose the good, the tree of life sprouts in you. And when you choose evil, you get the tree of knowledge. You get the tree of knowing what evil is. You get the tree that says, my spirit is going to be thrown into utter chaos. Because I have chosen to know what evil is. Did you know that Adam and Eve did not know nor understand evil in the Garden of Eden? They had no knowledge of it. Couldn't understand when the serpent said to them that if you eat this, you will die. They had no, no way to understand what evil was. They had not seen it. But all of a sudden, something changed on the inside of them. And what changed was the covering left them. How do we know that? How do we know the covering left them? Because in Genesis chapter 3, before he put them out of the garden, what did God do? God killed animals and covered them. 
The covering had left. Now I'm going to preach on what I want to preach on this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. We're going to finish this this week, I hope. Stand with me in honor of the reading of God's Word. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and if you'll notice in bold, bright black, is His and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, Father, I thank you for this, the ministry today. I thank you for the word, for the singing, for the fact that you are holy. I thank you for the fact that it is your holiness that covers us. I thank you today, God, that you're opening our eyes, that we can see the ears, that we can hear the hearts, that we can understand what the Word of God is saying to us. And as every Sunday, the Spirit of God is ministering and preaching to us. In such a way, God, that we can know, understand, and apply the Word of God to our life and be transformed into the image of your dear Son. Now, Father, bless us as we preach. We submit our will to yours. Let the Word of God just be disseminated through the Holy Spirit to your people. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Look at me at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. It says, But of him, made to be, we see, made to be. You are made to be. Every creature, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that was ever born in the eye of God was predestinated to be in Christ Jesus. If you're not in Christ Jesus today, you're not in there because that's what you want to be. If you're not under the covering from attack by the right, by uh, under the covering of the righteous one, protected from attack of the, the enemy of evil, you are not there because that's what you choose to be. Because Jesus has been very clear and I preached that you can't serve two masters, you'll only serve one. And whenever he looks at a spirit in chaos, when he looks at a spirit that is not serving him, what does he say about that? Well, I only know those that are serving the right master. Many are going to look at me and say, Lord, Lord, and I'll look at them and say, I never knew you. But you were created, made to be in Christ Jesus. We are in and the, now watch this now because this is very important. If you have been born by the blood of the Lamb, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are in Christ Jesus and made of God to be in that state. So therefore, you have become the same as Jesus because He became for us the righteousness of God. Watch this. Who is of God made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption? So if you have come to God through Christ Jesus, then what God did for you in Christ was that God made you to have wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Here's what he said. He said, I'll give you wisdom that will transcend the wisdom of the world. I'll give you righteousness, which is right standing with me, which means you're covered by me. When the storms of life come, it will not touch you because you are covered by me. And then he said he would give you sanctification, which means he would separate you to be his people. What did I say last week? 43 times in the Word of God. God said, and you will be my people, and I will be your God. Sanctified, separated. And then he said you would be redeemed. Redeemed from what? You would be redeemed from the curse that God put upon man because your spirit was transformed out of chaos, which Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1.13, that you were transformed from darkness into His glorious kingdom of His dear Son. So, if God through Christ is giving you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, then Jesus is the package that has made us to be these godly elements. These 
Now watch this because this is a very important statement. These results, are, these benefits are the results of what God did in Christ for us. Now I want you to get that. Because we think that in Christianity that we are supposed to work our way into heaven. That we are supposed to crawl our way into heaven. That we are supposed to pray our way into heaven. That we are supposed to do, 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 and do our way into heaven. But the Word of God declares that when you believed on Jesus Christ by grace through faith, God did something for you because of a righteous one, Jesus Christ, and the, right, the result of the righteous one's death on the cross has made you something you could not be any other way and you cannot work yourself into it. It only comes because you are in Him, His wisdom, His righteousness, His sanctification, and His redemption. Your role is to walk by grace through faith so that you can know Him. And the Bible said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Well, who is His righteousness? Well, it's Jesus Christ. So today what I'm trying to get you to see is I want you to seek Jesus Christ. I don't want you to seek works. I want you to do works as a result of the righteousness in you. See, that's what Jesus did. Jesus did works because He was the righteousness of God. Therefore, His standing with God was such that when He saw sickness, sickness could not stand before the righteousness of God. The standard God put on the table and said... This is the righteousness of God. It is Christ Jesus. But of Him are you in Christ. The righteousness that is in the Father was in the Son and transferred into you when you believe by grace through faith. Yeah. It's for you. We don't live there because we've been told in the world that you work your way into this thing. You do your way into this thing. You, you, you make your way into this thing. But when we read the Word of God, I want you to get that last comment because the Holy Spirit strikes that into my You make your way into this thing. The Bible does not teach that. I was teaching a Bible study one time and I told them about the, 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 the truth about the righteousness of man. That God did not set man free. God made man free. One fellow raised his hand and said, the Bible doesn't say that. I said, which Bible are you reading? Because if you're reading a Bible that is a translation, they will take the truth of the righteousness of God and turn it into a language that tells you that if you're set free, you can be caught again. But if you're made free, then you're free indeed. He whom the Son has made free is free indeed. For we are made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Seek only the righteous one, my friend. Don't seek ways, methods, ideas, plans, multiple days of purpose, but just seek Jesus of Nazareth. It is in Him that you are, and it is in Him that your righteousness exists. You will never be good enough to enter into the throne room of God with access on your own, stop trying to get there. Get there the way Paul said to get there. That you would be accepted in the beloved. How? Because you're such a good greeter? Because you do such a good job of putting together the snack box? Huh? Or you do such a great job with the music? Every one of those 
ones are important. But you are accepted in the beloved because of grace, by grace, through faith, and what Jesus Christ has done in you. It is about Him, my friend. It is His righteousness that Jesus said, Seek the kingdom and the righteous word and everything else will be added to you. Glory to God for that. Someone wave your hand to the Lord and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. But you are made of Him. In Christ Jesus, to have godly wisdom, Godly righteousness. You tell me how you can have godly wisdom in a world that is so evil. The world has eaten of the tree of knowledge and chosen the evil part of it. They've chosen the master that's leading them to hell. But Jesus said if you'll choose the righteous one, the righteous one will cause God to add Look at what he said here. What's he adding to you? Wisdom. He's adding your methodology to live in a world full of sin and know how to operate and navigate above that. <laughs> what a mighty God. He's operating in you righteousness. He's operating in you a separated life. And he's operating in you every promise of the plan of redemption. Well, what would that be, Pastor? It would be healing. It would be prosperity. It would be preservation. It would be safety. It would be deliverance. And it would be everything that comes out of the plan of salvation. It would be everything that God redemption covers everything. When the Word of God said every promise in Him is yea and amen, He's referring to the plan of redemption whereby God pronounced you not guilty. You're righteous. You're not guilty. The judgment of God does not stand against you. Somebody said to me not long ago, I just don't feel it anymore. I don't care what you feel. I'm not interested in your feelings. I'm interested in you understanding the word of Almighty God. He does not know what you are feeling with when you are feeling contrary to what He has told you to feel. Because that feeling is a feeling that comes from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God sees you in a completely different light. He sees you as righteous. What does he do? Well, when he is in the temple and Jesus fills the temple with his train and God looks at Jesus, this is what he says. I see Tawana Wilson. That's who I see. Because in him I see her. I see Joey Wells. How come? Because in him I see him. If I don't see Him, I can't see you. If you're not in Him, guess what? He doesn't see you. He sees you based on the righteousness that is in His Son. Because it was His Son that He sent to die on Calvary's tree for you on your behalf. So seek Him. Don't seek what you think about Him. Seek Him. Righteousness. Now watch this. What is righteousness? It is the standard of righteousness that God defines. Not the standard you define. Thank God. Because many of us, if I chose the righteousness, well, we wouldn't be very righteous. Because you know as well as I know. You know as well as I know. That if I want to, I can find fault with everybody in this room. I can find fault with myself. There are things I do and did just this week that I, I couldn't believe I did. But I did. Wrong. Feel bad about it. But the reality of the situation is God looks at me through the eyes of Christ and asks me a question. 
Where was your heart about? What was your heart about? Was your heart doing something that was being poured out for the love of people? Because when I look at Jesus, that's what I see. See that? I see that. Righteousness is a standard that God defines, not that I define. You could get mad at me because I do something or say something or act some kind of way that gets on your nerves or because I'm too loud or because I preach too long. But the question is, I am not defined by your idea of what righteousness is. Huh? Because a man is righteous only when he is in right standing with God. As God defines righteous. So what defines righteous? Well, let me show it to you. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto me. Jesus Christ is made unto me. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So a man is righteous only when he is in right standing with God through Jesus Christ. No other way, regardless of how you think about it, feel about it, want to theologize about it. If you're in right standing with God through Jesus Christ, you are the righteousness of God and made so by the blood of a testator who died so that you can be righteous. Yeah! Man's right standing is based on the position. Now watch this now, because this is very vital that you hear this. Your righteousness is not based on your position. Let me prove it to you. Jesus said these words. <laughs> He said, I have made you accepted in the blood. I have seated you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I have given you access into the throne room of God. Does that sound like anything you can do? No, your position is strictly related to who he is to the position he holds, to what he does in heaven, to what he did in the earth, and to what he did in hell that has caused the devil's hands to be bound and the covering of God to be placed over you because of his righteousness and his alone. And then by grace, the unmerited influence and the way God did things Man was brought to him so that man's faith would enter him into a new righteousness and a new era based on someone other than themselves. See, sin, now watch it now, watch it now. Sin was based on something other than God too. Sin was based on the devil. Sin captivated man based on some one. So man was captivated by all of hell based on what the devil did. God came along and made a second Adam, a righteous Adam, who went to Calvary, died, shed his blood, rose from the dead, sits at the right hand of God, and a second entity made it so you by faith by grace through faith could know the Father and He could take you to a place you could not go by yourself. He could make you accepted. He could make you seated. He could make you the priesthood of God. He could make you a holy nation. You can't do that. Jesus has done it. You need to simply live in the righteousness of the Son and everything will be added to you. What a glorious thing to know. Someone give the Lord a hand clap of breath. Yeah, yeah, you can't get around it, can't get over it, can't get through it, Now I'm going to show you something. This is what I'm knowing. We look at this thing, we don't understand the love of God. 1 John 4, 17 said, Herein is our love made perfect. Herein. Herein what? Because you don't love perfectly. You don't have that innate ability. Now listen, you can love her, but it ain't going to be perfect because she's going to do something you don't like. And you're going to get mad. And you're going to say, talk to the hand. <laughs> hmm? 
That's never happened in your house, does it? Well, I bet it happens over here. Uh, here we're doing that. Here. <laughs> huh? But herein, see, in the flesh, we can never, in the flesh, we can never understand and gravitate to the love of God. Because the only way we can get there is in the herein. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our ability that we can have boldness in the day of judgment. Herein what? Herein where? Where is herein? How do we get there? What Jesus told us. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and you'll get all the herein you want. He said, because everything will be added to you after that. Herein is our love made. The only way to have your love made perfect is when it's made perfect in the spiritual realm. Because the result of the righteousness of God in your life, the result of the righteousness of God in your life will be that you will begin to grow from the tree of righteousness express the fruit of righteousness and become now watch this now because this is the dynamic revelation you never heard before the image of Christ Jesus that's how you do it herein by doing the righteousness of God listen Jesus is your advocate he is your defender he is your intercessor he is the one who prays for you he is your mediator. He is the one that goes between you and God. He is your holy priest. He is the one that sacrifices for you. He is the Lord of lords and the King of kings and the soon coming Christ. Herein, the only way for the love of God to be perfected in you is when you realize it comes through one avenue, one thing, one plan, one person, one seat that fills the temple that the angels cry, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. That's where it comes from. No place else. Amen? That is. Now there's a lot to be preached here. Herein is our love made perfect. The union and communion with Him is brought to completion and attains perfection with us. That we may have confidence in the day of judgment with assurance and boldness to face Him. Now watch this, because this is the line I want you to meditate on for a minute. Because as He is, so are we in this world. 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect because we are the righteousness of God. We are the wisdom, sanctification. We are the righteousness and the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And that attains perfection with us. We can't get it in our flesh. We can only get it through Christ. That we may have confidence. I don't have to worry about myself. I just have to serve the right master. And in the day of judgment, I'll have boldness to face him. I'll have boldness and fruit of the benefits of his righteousness to lay at his feet. Because as he is today, so am I in this world. I am the righteousness of God. I want you to begin to say that with your bow, head bowed. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. Christ made me the righteousness of God. It's not by what I do. It's not by anything that I could possibly add to the equation. What I have added is my service and my love. But I've come by grace, through faith, and I've received the very righteousness of the Son of God that has made me the very image of His dear Son. And so whatever He is in heaven today, if He is the intercessor, if He is the advocate, 
If he is the mediator, if he is the priest, if he is the king that reigns, then his image is in me, and that same image causes me to become who he is for as he is, so am I in this world, waiting for the day when I can stand face to face with him and him look at me and say, my righteousness is that man. My righteousness is that woman. Enter into the rest of your heavenly Father, made for you. Glory be to God. I am made the righteousness of God. Now then, I want you to meditate upon this a minute. He said, if you would seek the kingdom of God first and His righteousness, then things would begin to be added unto you. Our mind says, I'm going to get a Ferrari. But we know that's not the case. There are elements of the tree of righteousness called the fruit of righteousness that lives and works within you. You're going to find your temper begin to fall down. You're going to find your upset, your distrust, your anger to begin to be dismantled within you. You're going to find the things that have harmed you Mentally and emotionally, when you get into the righteousness of God, will begin to fall off. You're going to find the dark places that you walk through. All of a sudden, the light of God will pierce because the righteous one has added a fruit of his righteousness to you. You're going to find that all of a sudden, things you've been praying about are going to become changed in your midst. Your finances, your desire for things of the world are going to begin to fall to the side because the righteous one is adding something to you that you have sought and didn't know how to get to because you tried to work for it. You tried to discipline your flesh to get away from it. But until the righteous one becomes the thing he will, and you are seeking the kingdom of God. Those things that you're battling in the flesh, you will continue to battle because you do not have the righteous one living out of you so that you can live in His righteousness, not your own. Everybody has a battle. Everybody has a story. Thank God that through Christ Jesus His righteousness can come out of me and I can be as He is so as Mike Springston in this world. Someone said, now preacher, you're telling me I ain't never going to fight another battle. No, I'm telling you, you're going to stand toe to toe with the battle. I'm telling you that you're going to look the battle eyeball to eyeball. And you're going to say the righteous one on the inside of me who created in me a new spirit defies you by the name of Jesus Christ whom I am and whom I serve. And the Bible said if you will resist the devil, he'll flee from you. If you'll draw nigh unto God, he will draw nigh unto you. Someone said it sounds too easy. It is. Until you understand, God is made to you by Christ Jesus to be wisdom to overcome the world, to be righteousness so that as you are, as He is, so are you in this world, to be sanctification so that you can be separated from the things that buffet you, and then so that you can experience every benefit of being under the shadow of the Almighty's wings through the plan of redemption. Now someone is sitting there praying and they're saying, God, I want this for me. I've heard it preached. It resonates in my spirit. And I want to walk 
in the additions of the righteousness of God. I want to live under the things that God can give me, the benefits of the fruit of righteousness. I want to be free, Father, from the things that buffet my soul and my spirit. I want my heart to be made free. That's you. I want you to stand to your feet and I simply want you to raise your hands. I want you to begin to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because it is in His righteousness. If you stand, it's in His righteousness that you stand. It's not in your physical self. It's not in your mind. It's not in your flesh. It's in the Spirit of God where righteousness reigns. And Paul said that if you would do that, that you could reign in life by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise Him just a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your righteousness Spring forth in me. Let the tree of life, the fruit of righteousness, spring forth in me. Father, I seek you first today. Father, I seek you first. Somebody begin to use your heavenly language. Begin to praise him in your heavenly language and turn that loose. Somebody begin. Father, we praise you today. We thank you today, God. We worship you. You are the righteousness of God. You gave us righteousness. Help us to understand it. God, you define the standard of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to us, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. For I have called you and I have set you in a place that is not a place that the flesh can get to. It is only a place where the righteous, blood-bought children of God can come to. And your Lord has opened the entrance for you to be there. And He calls you. And He calls you. And He calls you. Come by me for I am the door. I have told you I am the way. I have spoken to you and said I am the truth. And I have said to you I am the life. Therefore, if you will walk in the righteousness that I have provided for you, that I have given you, in the same way that you have walked in the knowledge of being saved. And let the righteousness of God transform your life. You will become as I am. You will become an advocate for the lost. You will become an intercessor. You will become the one who serves to minister through my righteousness, not your flesh. And a spirit of God will overtake you. 
And you will have words that you do not know. And direction that you do not understand. But if you will walk with me. And talk with me. And know that my righteousness is in you. And I have made you a new creation. By that righteousness. I will shield you. I will comfort you. I will give you the benefits of all of heaven for you to live in, saith the Lord. Glory to God. Worship God just a second. Father, we thank you today. Father, we worship you today. Father, we honor you today. We simply stand in awe of your presence. We stand in awe of your presence. We stand in awe of you. You are God, and above you there is nobody else. Thank you, Lord, for your righteousness. God, may I bear the benefit of the righteous tree of life in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give the Lord a hand to that prayer. you say that I receive it in Jesus name I receive it in Jesus name I receive it in Jesus name I receive what you said to me today God I receive it in Jesus name it belongs to me my, my life is after his righteousness my service my service is because of his righteousness see the difference amen well listen if I hadn't told you I love you you're my favorite group of people. I just enjoy looking into your eyes and watching you worship. I pray that God is ministering to you and helping you. And I pray that you will go from here and apply what we've heard today. Listen to it on YouTube. Get it again. Amen. Get it again on YouTube. Brandon, if you'll dismiss us in person.